So this is for, uh, they're going to have it up at the Hall of Fame in Myrtle Beach? Yeah, this is, uh, we're doing Hall of Fames for, um, you know, all the inductees for the Hall of Fame. Oh, okay. So uh, that hasn't been done, obviously. Yeah, no, we're in the process You're of doing it. Okay. What, what, what would you want people to know about Les Moreland? Well, I think he's a man um, who, using his tenacity, dedication, discipline, um, achieved for himself a, a, a honorable record as a military leader and uh, some very famous units. Uh, and he persisted to do his duty in very difficult situations in Vietnam. Um, and, you know, we have to respect the fact that he didn't throw up the towel and say, you know, after two years I've had it, I'm gone. He continued to do, uh, to organize and uh, command, you know, this growing force in Vietnam in a manner he thought uh, would win the war. Since, this, you know, we're doing this for the Hall of Fame, and so what would you, for the people of South Carolina, what would you want them to know about General Westmoreland and his legacy? I, I think the people of South Carolina should be proud of General Westmoreland in a time of peril. Uh, he went to war, uh, enormous sacrifice to his own personal well-being and his family, uh, and he led American soldiers with integrity and valor for four years. And uh, I think people should be proud of this native son of our state. And my dad did a lot of um, changes at West Point. Uh, he was actually a, a, a very innovative guy. People don't think of him this way. Uh, but he made a lot of changes in the structure of the school and the institution. Um, and that was three years. And uh, we often say that was the, uh, yeah, to say maybe the best three years of our, quote, family and our family life, because we were more or less a normal family. My father was the head, of course, in Vietnam and, and then on, and on his chief of staff. So he spoke to people and he was proud of what he did and he was proud of what they did. And I think there was a great hunger to hear that. They weren't getting it from the media, they weren't getting it from our society. Most people didn't want to deal with, with Vietnam. They, didn't, they couldn't really embrace the veteran, uh, but my father did. And it didn't matter if the guy had hair down to here and tattoos all over his body. If, if he had served, my father embraced him. And um, so I think that became really his, his mission. who did not waver from his convictions and who was dedicated to the country and to the army that he served. strategy was to do enough military 
operations. And it didn't matter if the guy had hair down to here and tattoos all over his body or if he had served. My father embraced him. And, uh, so I think that became really his, his mission. General Westmoreland was a uh, pallbearer at my father's funeral because he was one of my dad's closest friends. And uh, they'd served together uh, in, uh, in World War II. Again, yeah, this is a man who had great standards and lived up to them, you know, 100%. So, uh, you know, he's certainly a role model. He loved the state, and I think he's a great example. Uh, obviously, a lot of people are going to be born here and, and stay here and raise their family here, but he was one of the ones that, that left and uh, made a dent on the world and then, then came home uh, happily so.